Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Monday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. This morning, I want to say a very big thank you to uh, the Dr. Koyo Enim Wright and all the folks at the UPSA over the weekend. It was a great time hanging out with the Master's Court as a guest lecturer for their communication studies class. And we had to pour out a bit of what we know. So thank you to the UPSA. Thank you particularly to Dr. Koyo Enim Wright for affording me the opportunities to step into a big shoes temporarily. I don't take that for granted at all. I also want to say a big congratulations to Robert Coleman and the Wembley Sports Construction Limited. Over the weekend, it was a big fat party for widows and orphans, and you should see the smiles on their faces. Uh, Reverend Azigiza Jr. was there, Reverend Odami Sarabai was there, Stephen Apia was there, Okestina okay, Hinfo was there, uh, Sam Johnson was there, um, there was also Niyama Senegal, many other, uh, Kwame Ayu and the rest, they were all there, and then it was an exciting time that we had um, at the Ganagas uh, Sports Club. So congrats to you, Coleman, and uh, God bless you as well. <clears throat> now, I begin the conversation with what is happening in our secondary schools. The GES, in its usual format, has uh, asked teachers or headmasters who are charging inappropriate fees or illegal fees to step aside for investigations. This will not be the first time that the, <clears throat> the GES is asking anybody to step aside. A recent case is that of Dr. Shinofori of West Africa Secondary School. They asked Dr. Shanofori to step aside. And up until now, we do not know what the details of that investigation have been. The only thing we know is that Dr. Shinofori has been asked to uh, go back and we have not seen the report because the woman was dragged through the mud in the public. We have also seen, I showed you some place in the north, they asked the headmaster to step aside. They were going to con conduct investigations. That report is still being kept. So they are learning from the Jubilee House where Al Jazeera writes to them, but they decide to keep the reply and they, they try to speak extempore to us. Show us the document. We can read it and interpret. Now they're asking headmasters to step aside. And that didn't start now. You remember when we started Free SHS? Was it La, uh, Presec, La, or Teshi, one of the schools there? The headmasters were, sacked, were, uh, were, were dealt with because they spoke about the fact that they didn't have chairs. So the government and the authorities always try to find a way to cover up their inconsistency and their inability and their incompetence by trying to write letters. And I say, if in this country, the rule is that when you are mentioned in, in an issue, you are asked to step aside, then there should be a lot more ministers and heads of departments and agencies and MCEs who should be asked to step aside for investigations to go on. But no, the teachers and the nurses are the softest targets that authorities can also get, always get. So they are always asking them to step aside. What really is the matter? Is the GES pretending not to know that the schools already, even though we hurriedly and, and, and unnecessarily um, cancelled PTAs or parent-teacher association, I mean, my child is in school. There's a teacher and headmaster, school administration that's taking care of them. And we cannot have a PTA, which is a common platform for us to interact and say, this is how we are training your children so that I can also make inputs. We cancel PTAs in this country. But we know that PTAs still exist. And we know that for old boys and old girls, PTAs still exist on platforms. And the schools are determined, the, the, the parents are determined to pay certain fees so that the children can get the best quality. Last week, I showed you the food that they were eating in the primary school. And I said, their children would never eat those kinds of foods. So the, the schools have their own platforms where parents agree to pay some 200, some 500, some 1,000. People donate. I know schools in Accra where parents have bought lawn mowers because they don't want their children to go and weed with cutlasses. And I know it, it's there. We, we can't all pretend that it is not happening. And we cannot all pretend that when a prospectus is issued, it is a straitjacket thing because there are certain schools that have certain tradition that has been kept over time. 
When we went to secondary school, ceremonial clothes and all those tie and cardigan and everything else was part of the thing. Our parents paid for it. They didn't complain. So why are you punishing people for trying to continue a tradition that already exists? I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are we punishing people for trying to do... And you see, we always want to play to the, to the gallery. We also always want to play the populist game. And then we come and say, oh, it is free. Nobody's supposed to. But you and I know that the cost implications that parents have to bear is beyond what you call free. Let's put together what you are contributing to the parents in terms of tuition and, and other things. And let's calculate how much parents are spending on their own, just to make sure that their children are comfortable. The food in the schools. I know parents who cook almost every week to take to their children in school, give them extra supplies. As I've said earlier, free SHS is good. The implementation is whack. It's nya. And we need to face reality, sit down, and have a think through. Stop this over politicization of this free SHS. Today you are buying past questions. Tomorrow you are doing this. Tomorrow you are doing this. Tomorrow you are doing that. Just to come and say that, oh, we have this, this number of children in school and these number of children have passed and it is the highest in West Africa. And here then, watch the quality. Children are going to school for three weeks, two weeks, and they come back and sit down for three months. Watch the quality. So somebody has gone to a certain secondary school and for all the three years, they don't even know who their seniors are. They don't know who their juniors are because by the time the seniors are leaving school, the juniors are now coming like we have now. Seniors are going home. Juniors are staying in school. So they will finish and they don't know who their seniors are. They don't know who their juniors are. That school culture that was built. So today I see my seniors from school. I know them. They know me. We interact. We hobnob. It is not there. You are damaging the, the fabric of society. And all you can do is to suspend people and write letters. And also like I'm saying, what is that? What is the meaning of that? Instead of you to sit down and fix the policy as it is, you are busy. I, I mean, maybe we should have a league table for which head, headmaster or headmistress is interdicted every now and then because we are trying to cover up some rubbish that is happening within official dom. Maybe we should have that. The reality on the ground is that Parents are paying more than they were paying. If you tell people that they have, they, there's free education, let it be seen in their lives. But to the extent that parents are paying more, that's a problem. And I don't see why you should target the headmaster if you promise them to, to give them something to keep the school running. And for three months, you have not brought it and the children are in school. And the headmasters and headmistresses appeal to, to, to people. What's the point? I told you, I've told you here on this platform before, how a whole school, a whole school's budget for home economics practicals and visual arts practicals was about 9,000. And what they sent just for one department was about 9,000. What GES sent to the school for the whole visual arts, home, all economics, and whole general science thing was 7,000 CDs. Now, if one department needs 9,000, and you send 7,000 CDs for three departments, how are they going to cope? So parents then have to come in. If the headmaster or headmistress goes to ask for money, boy, go home. What, what kind of thing is that? What kind of thing is that? You're just behaving like those typical bad police people who stop truck truck people on the road every now and then for no offense, and then all they do is to collect money from them. And so because of that, the truck truck people, too, instead of picking a vehicle from Kwashiman to, say, Kaneshi, they will pick from Kwashiman and come and drop you at Odoko. They will pick you from Odoko and come and drop you at Kaneshi. Then they will pick you from Kaneshi and come and drop you at Accra. And they will charge you sopi, 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 sopi. Instead of charging you from maybe Kwashiman straight to Accra, they will charge you sopi, 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 because they need to make extra so that they can feed the insatiable desire of that corrupt policeman who is always stopping them on the road and collecting sales. One, one CD, two, two CD, five, five CDs. That's what GES is doing. That's how they are behaving. That is exactly how GES and Ghana Education Service are behaving. Mr. Process, Dr. Process, watch your people. Watch your people. There's also a case of causing financial loss to the state that was brought to my attention by uh, uh, Savannah and North, Northeast Regional Correspondent Chris. Show me the excavator, the grader. So these graders were bought on loan. And they have been abandoned at certain places. So this one was caught up in a bushfire. 
we spent state resources to buy this. In fact, I'm told it was a loan. And this belongs to Sanerigu, the municipal assembly, Sanerigu. And it has been caught up there, bent. Now who go pay? And it, I'm told that there are about 170 districts or so that all benefited from these facilities. Now who go pay? So the people at the Sanarigu District Assembly, I say good morning to you. I'm just greeting you this morning. Maybe you are happy with yourselves with what has happened. Maybe you are not happy. Or maybe you know that, yes, it has happened, but nothing will happen to you. Nobody will ask you to step aside because you are not a teacher or a nurse. But this is it. And a, a grader that has been left and it's been, it's, it, has, it has been burnt because of, 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 of bushfires. That's the understanding I got. And it's left there. So what could have been used to help the people if they want their, 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 their roads to be graded and all of that, it's been left there. A waste on the taxpayer's pocket. A waste on the taxpayer's pocket. A big waste on the taxpayer's pocket. Quickly show me Dr. Awal's photo. I'll make this a daily feature until oh, I know nice. that there has been a meeting at the National Theatre with the workers to hear their concerns. Because the National Theatre as it is, is sinking. Don't be fooled by the fact that one or two, three shows are happening and the crowd is there. The real people who are suffering are the National Theatre. People who work overtime and they will do the night, nice night production that you go and watch. We are going back to what the gods are not to blame. When they finish the nice night productions, the National Theatre will give people's parents 60 Ghana CDs for all the donkey job that they have done. So Dr. Awa, I say, I know what you did at Graphic. I know what you did with your Finder newspaper. The National Theatre is an agency and you it is calling. It is not good that the numerical strength of the staff of National Theatre is dropping. It is not good that people are retiring and they are not being replaced. It is not good that knowledge is not being transferred. It is not good that your workers are disgruntled. It is not good that people are habitually moved from one department to the other because somebody is not happy about a certain situation. It is not good. It is not good that their conditions of service in terms of the furniture they even use at the National Theatre in their offices and which was reflected in the main auditorium because the, the, the insects had eaten the chairs. You could see rodents and bugs and the rest. Until recently, where they changed the carpets and fumigated the place and changed the chairs and washed the dirty curtain. All is not well. I've showed you the list of things that are happening at the National Theatre. So, Dr. Wall, I'm greeting you again. And I, the basis of this greeting to you is that your government promised to build theatres across the 16 regions of the country. You have not done that. You promised to build one ultra-modern theatre somewhere. You have not done that. You also promised to set up an art fund. I don't know about that. You said we're going to set up recording studios for, for musicians. You have not done that. So at least if you have not been able to fulfill what you said you were going to do, the national theater that already exists, give it a facelift. Make the people happy. Then you can't even brag with that. So, Doc, good morning to you. I will keep greeting you until I hear and know that there's a meeting at the National Theater. So if you know Dr. Wa, well, tell him I'm greeting him. I'm saying good morning to him. When he goes, he should not meet the board. He's been meeting the board every now and then. When he goes, he should not meet the management. He's been meeting them every now and then. When he goes, he should drill down, like how the deputy minister for trade did at Gayhawk. Meet the workers. Then you will hear in your ears the real thing on the ground, not the whitewashed things that people come and tell you. No, no, no. So good morning to you. A final issue for this morning. The controller and accountant general who is the chief, chief finance accounts person for the nation. And recently, civil servants were asking for neutrality allowance. No, 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 show me the picture first, the, banner, the poster. He wants to contest to become an MP, one of the constituencies in the central region. Controller and accountant general. He has not stepped aside. Though. Show his photo Johnny's for me, please. Right. He has not stepped aside. He's in office. He's supposed to be controlling our money. 
People still are giving appointment and it takes about one year, sometimes six months before they get their first pay. He is going to contest on the ticket of the MPP and he's promising a new leadership. And I'm, I'm asking this question because you expect that for, what, for whatever it is, you can belong to a political party. But where is the neutrality? We are busy building huge public giants on partisan lines. Last week, I spoke to you about how we are building partisan business people so that when their party is no longer in power, it becomes a problem for them to sustain their businesses. There are certain businesses in this country that never get jobs to do until their political regime is in power. This is our controller and accountant general. A full-blown MPP man who couldn't hide it and who has also decided not to leave office. But he is still there performing his functions. He is still there managing the monies of both NDC, MPP, CPP, PPP, everybody's monies. And he is still there hoping to wave the flag on the ticket of the NPP. Take me to the Electoral Commission. When in the beginning of the year we spoke about the fact that the Electoral Commission Johnny's was being right. padded with party people, Tescon patron, Dr. Pia Henning and the Hajia, they are the Electoral Commission. Oh, they have not left. Jean Mensah is standing by them and smiling. And she says that there are people who want to foment trouble in the 2024 elections. But um, if there's anybody who wants to foment trouble in the 2024 elections, it is you because you have refused to say these things that I'm saying. When you supervise over the elections at Ayawaso West Wogon, where people were slapped and maimed and shot, did you know that people were going to cause mayhem? When you supervise the election where eight people died in this country, as an electoral commissioner, have you spoken about it? When you supervise two by elections this year, Sin North and I think Kumewa or something, and where people, some, an old woman said that she wanted to vote for party A, and then the electoral commission's officer got her to vote for party B, where were you? When you supervise elections in 2020, and people were cutting off Nanado's picture from the ballot sheet. It happened. The evidence. What did you do? When you supervised elections in Asin North and people were misbehaving, your own electoral commission ad hoc staff were misbehaving. What did you do about it? So now you come and you come and tell us that somebody wants to foment trouble. Name the people. And did you have to come and say that publicly in, in, so that what will happen? I've showed you. You have die hard MPP people within your circles and you are supposed to be a neutral arbiter. Show me the controller and counter general's photo again. And the controller and counter general has come to say that, oh, the allegations, and I, I was hoping that the allegations, show me the daily guide cutting. The allegation was going to be that, oh, it is not true that I'm contesting. Johnny's the allegation bike. is not, it's not to say it's not true that I'm contesting. No. The allegation is that he has not put people on a payroll as Edward Bauer had said on key points last Saturday. He has not. But the truth of the matter is that he is contesting. So which of our state institutions have not been politicized? We saw how Dr. Daniel Domelovo was hounded out of his office under the auspices of the presidency. Board chairman who was told by the president not to interfere in the day-to-day -day running of the institutions that they handle. National Theatre Bochema is in their business every day, writing query to people, interfacing with the people, instead of the executive director. Board chairman at, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, um, um, Auditor General's department, wrote to the president. The president, as board chairman of the country, also got involved. Eventually, the Supreme Court said, Mr. President, you have been lawless. Then nine people said, you have been lawless. A lawyer cannot be lawless, but the Supreme Court of the Republic said, in the matter of Domelevo and how you acted, you did not act with the law. Therefore, you are lawless. That's the inference I draw. So what are we doing as a country? Which state institution have we not politicized so that the best pair of hands are not given the opportunity to be there? Even MMDCs are asked to step aside if they want to contest. So how is it that our controller and accountant general, Jen, show me a photo. 
The controller and accountant general. Show me his photo. Johnny's bite. He's still at post. And wants to contest. He has not left. Abuse of incumbency, I don't know. Abuse of power, I don't know. Conflict of interest, I don't know. So if you live in a, in a constituency and your salary issues come before him and you maybe do not support him, what could possibly happen to you? I don't know. Could he be using that as, as an opportunity to say, oh, media, this is where I sit and so this is what I'm able to, I don't know. I'm just asking what the streets are asking. Why are we building political giants instead of strong institutions? Because now that we know that he is MPPs, blue, 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 and red and white, and he wants to contest for that seat at the a controller and counter general's department, if you don't know and you go and rear your ugly head and you say you belong to another side, you, you may be in trouble. But is that supposed to be so? Can we at least save some of these institutions of ours and keep them right at the middle? Because I'm sure when they bring neutrality allowance, our good friend Honorable Kwesi Kweni Mbosumpe will collect his share of the, of the neutrality allowance. Is he neutral? No, because he has shown he's not neutral. A new leadership for a better future. Let's watch it all. Because the country is already polarized. And we cannot continue with the polarization. We cannot. I said earlier that we will get to a point where you go to a police station to go and report a crime, and the man will look at you and say, Oh, because you, you are MPP, I won't follow you. Or because you, you are NDC, I won't follow you. Or they will follow you, but they say, Hey, when they get to a corner with you, they say, hey, You, you are MPP, you, you are NDC, we'll deal with you. We are getting there. Because even the recruitment processes that we go through are a problem. We need to wake up. The elders of this country need to wake up. We need to wake up. Have a good morning. <laughs>